Hey, it's Rob. Welcome to Axel's Garage. Well, it's hot. Look, 92 degrees, humid. I'm sweating, and I got to deal with a problem that really only happens when it's hot, which really sucks because now we got a lot of heat. So we got this 2003 Chevy Suburban 5.3 motor and NATO engine in it, and the story goes now my son has been using this because his k5 has got some fuel delivery issues so he's been using this he's driving about 45 50 miles an hour on a secondary road and they're doing construction up off the road and they had a some kind of drainage hose and they pretty much flooded the roadway with a, with a lot of water he hits it at about the 45 miles an hour 50 miles an hour or so and really just throws water everywhere he said it, the truck immediately started to stumble, the throttle wasn't really reacting well until it started to dry out. He said and then he drove it and once it dried out and most of that water got out of there, everything seemed to be okay. And then the next day he started to notice a little bit of a stumble and the check engine light was flashing. So, flashing check engine light usually indicating a misfire. I took it for a ride after he got home the other day and the engine was hot and it was definitely misfiring. Um, running really rough I put the um, code reader on it and I got a bunch of throttle position codes and I took pictures of them so I could tell you what they were so he got a, uh, a whole load of throttle position codes so he got throttle uh, P0120 which is a throttle pedal position sensor switch a circuit he got a a uh, P0220 which is a throttle pedal position sensor switch B circuit so the A and the B in the throttle position switch was sensor the TPS um, it's like a dual switch that if one goes bad you still have the other one in control of the throttle um, he also got a, an oddball one a P0420 which was catalyst system efficiency below threshold in bank one now remember bank one that's the the, um, the odd numbered bank that's the driver's side bank um, and then he's got a throttle actuator control module throttle actuator position performance so I cleared and oh and he had a cylinder 3 misfire I'm sorry cylinder 3 misfire and a P0200 which is an injector circuit open and the cylinder 3 misfire is the uh, P0303 is, you know, the, the P0300s are a, a multiple misfire and then the 30 and the number is the cylinder. So it's 303 he got, which is cylinder 3 misfire. So I cleared the codes out, went for a ride, and the only codes that came back were the injector circuit, the P0200 and the the P0303 which is a cylinder 3 misfire so he's got the injector circuit code and the misfire code now let the truck cool down went for a ride again the truck ran fine do have the check engine light on because of those two codes that were thrown but the truck was running absolutely fine I did it with the scanner on it went into closed loop everything was fine and then once it got to about 190 degrees um, on the uh, the water temp reading it from the the, the scan tool, that's when it started to misfire, and you can see the engine all of a sudden got, got started running rough. Um, it changed from closed loop to open loop fault, and rough running engine, and when you go to give it gas, you check engine light flashes, indicating the, the misfire. So, because we have, it's cylinder three, and we know that it's cylinder three, which is great, that it's not a, a 300 where it's multiple, only happening when it's hot, and we have the injector um, circuit code the 0200 we can kind of focus on it being an injector circuit or a fuel issue not a spark issue with the coils because coils are common on these as well this has got about 180 190 thousand miles on it um, it's all workhorse though so now we got to try to figure out what's going on so I just went for a ride got it to start misfiring and got the codes going and I'll show you what I got well how bad the glare is on this but you can see right now I got two codes it's in open loop fault the engine temperatures at 194 degrees and if I go down and read those codes all right I'm gonna have the injector circuit open 
and I'm going to have the cylinder three misfire detected, and it's running rough. All right, so just looking at it, you can see, you can see it shaking, and here is number one, so here is number three, and we're going to have to investigate a little bit further now. It could be an injector, it could be the injector wiring, um, it kind of sucks that, that, uh, that it's got to be so hot to do it, but I'm going to go along and I'm going to go with a little wiggle test at first around that number three injector and see if I can get it to stop shaking like this. So after a, what I considered a thorough wiggle test, uh, within about six inches of the uh, injector plug, no change at all. I unplug the injector, and no change in how the engine is uh, is running right now. So, got to figure out whether the injector is bad now or the injector harness. So what I'm going to try to do um, with a test light. You should be able to, uh, one one plug on that injector harness should uh, have constant 12 volt, and the other one should be a, a, a dim flicker. I mean, I don't have Noid lights or any fancy test equipment, just a test light and a, uh, and a multimeter. And like a DIY kind of guy, I'm gonna use what I have before I start throwing uh, a pot at it. You know, when it's your own car, you can't throw pots at it um, and not piss anybody off like a customer. Um, I don't have customers, so if I want to throw a pot at it, I can throw a pot at it. But um, I'd like to try to narrow it down a little bit. Um, so let me see if I can test the uh, the injector plug end and see if I get any kind of reading. I don't know if I will or not. I've never done this before. Uh, I'm just trying because I want to get this thing running good. All right, so taking a test light, putting it on battery negative, touch the positive and the light lights up, I don't know if you can see that, All right, I'm going to come into the injector harness here and we're going to go on one side and I got constant power which is what you'd want and the other side I got nothing, I should have a little dim flicker here, alright so my second go around at this because i'm an idiot sometimes and i'm not thinking myself all the way through we've got two wires coming into the to the fuel injector all right one is going to be constant 12 volt and the other one's going to be the control wire which is going to be ground and i'm checking them both with a regular test light so here we got our test light connected to ground put it to a positive you can see that it works all right there's our test light lit up now, I'm going to take the test light and I'm going to put it on the red wire. A little tough to get it in there. I hope I didn't screw up the uh, connector here by stabbing it so many times with the test light. I can't seem to get that connected good. I don't know if this connector is fucked up. There we go. There we go. There you go, you can see it's lit up. All right, now you turn around and take your test light, put it to battery positive, All right? Check it. All right, go to the other wire and you should get the flicker. Hopefully you'll be able to see the flicker. I don't know if you know it's going to come up on the camera, but I got a dim flicker. So now, I know that this is good. All right, so now, knowing that I got power and I got control going to that fuel injector, that fuel injector is the one that's missing, there's two things I could do. I could swap the injectors. So take the number three injector, put it on number one, and see if that... Um, 
default follows to number one, where now I'm getting a number one misfire, or I can check and uh, put a, just put a fuel injector in number three, because it's probably going to be the fuel injector, because the wire going to the fuel injector is good. Um, the only other thing I could do to verify that it is the fuel injector, which I'm leaning towards now, is check the resistance from the, a good fuel injector, like number one, compared to a bad fuel injector that we think, number three, and see if there's a, a big difference in resistance there that would indicate that that fuel injector is probably bad. Um, but before we change, we think, we're think we thinking we're going to change fuel injectors here. Either we're going to swap or we're going to put a new one in. So what you want to do is relieve the pressure on the fuel rail. I'm going to pull the fuel pump relay and let the car run itself out of fuel. Just like that. And then I'll crank it a little bit and get the residual fuel pressure out of it. So now I should have the residual fuel pressure out of it and I can check the resistance on the two fuel injectors, the number three and the number one. So if I go to Ohms, you get 14.3 resistance there. Now if I take off number one, I'm getting 14 on number one, so that ain't helping. That ain't helping at all. I don't know. All right, so where am I at? Well, I know that I have power and control on number three, the same as I have it on number one, which is good, and number three, which is misfiring. It's misfiring only when it's hot. Um, the wires, the tug test on the wires seem to be okay, doesn't change anything, and like I said, it only happens when it's hot, so the wire tug test shouldn't really matter. Could I have a, a bad end? Uh, it, it's possible, because they do go bad, those ends, those, those ends that plug into the fuel injector, they do sell them, <laughs> they keep them in stock at, at usually most of the big box part stores, because they do go bad. Um, but. I checked the resistance on the fuel injectors and both of the, the good and the, and the possibly bad injector are about the same resistance, they're about 14, 14.3 or something like that. So then, so then I, I do have a box of, of engine parts for these engines because we've had so many of them with a good coil um, in it um, with a known bad injector in it and I checked the resistance on the bad injector which is at ambient temperature in the garage which is say 80 degrees and that one was like 13.2 so it was pretty close and I also have a new injector um, or a, a remanufactured injector which was in the house which is 68 70 degrees with DAC on and that one was around 12 on the resistance so um, probably temperature could could relate to to how much resistance there is because these are the hottest and these are the highest resistance but um, what I found odd was that the known bad injector that I saved, I put it back in the box, I marked it bad just so I had a sample of a known bad injector in my, in my pile of crap that I have in the garage because I have a, an automotive illness. Um, you know, it means that just because the resistance is reading normal or what we think is normal doesn't mean the injector is bad. So if I had nothing and this was all the information I had, I would swap one and three and see if the problem uh, moved over to one. I am going to throw, because I have an injector uh, that's supposed to be a good one, it's new in the box, um, I'm gonna put the injector in and go ahead and do the injector and hopefully only have to do this once instead of moving it over and then having to put an injector in afterwards. So I'm gonna do the injector. If I didn't have the injector, I would swap one and three and see if the, the misfire now came on cylinder one. If it did, then I knew that injector was bad. But everything else, um, points to it being good. Uh, the the uh, we have that code for the, the the circuit, the injector circuit fault, which could be the injector causing that code. It doesn't appear to be the wires or the signal going into the injector because that all checks out okay. Um, it's the same as as number one. We're getting the uh, the the control and we're getting the the power. So I'm going to go ahead and change the injector. That that's my that's my bet here. So I ran it out of gas by taking the fuel pump relay out while I was running them, cranked it for uh, five or six seconds to get any residual fuel out. I took the, um, 
the cap off the fuel rail Schrader valve and push the Schrader valve in to see if there was anything in there and there was no residual fuel pressure so I should be good there I don't have any junk down here that looks like it'll fall into anything so on this fuel rail on this side you have two um, eight millimeter nuts and it doesn't look like anything's connected up here I got a little wiggle room I, I disconnected the um, the clips for this big wire harness so I have a little wiggle room and see if I can get these off without breaking anything oh actually little bolts I thought they were I thought they were nuts there's a little clip on the injector which holds it on the rail I want to try to pull that little horseshoe it's a little horseshoe clip I'll show you once I get it out all right this little horseshoe clip like this which holds the injector onto the rail now here's the new injector on the horseshoe clip I believe so the horseshoe clip is going to go back around the injector just like this and when you pop it up and in it'll snap in just like that all right so here's our suspect bed injector Now I got a new injector and I put a little bit of silicone grease on both of the O-rings. Okay. I'm going to leave those wires just like that for now. Leave everything like it is. And we're going to start it up and let it warm up and see if anything changes once it warms up. Now it cooled down a considerable amount. So oh, we're going to need the fuel pump relay back in so we can start it up. still shaking here all right so I once again forgot to turn the power on on the mic so you get to hear me do a voiceover now our misfire did not follow from cylinder 3 to cylinder 1 like we had, would have anticipated and that's why I should have followed my own advice and I should have just swapped the two fuel injectors that were in there not introduced the new fuel injector because now we're just not sure of what's going on so even though I had the new fuel injector I didn't have to go out and buy it and waste money throwing parts at it uh, I shouldn't have used it I should have swapped the fuel injectors I, I was trying to, to save a step because um, if the you know injector was bad and I swapped it I had to you know still take the rail back off again and put the new fuel injector in. I thought I was saving a step and I wasn't what I was doing was manipulating that harness a little too much when I was checking for power and control. So now your power, you're gonna check with your test light on battery negative, so you're gonna check for power on the test light, and how the test light should be lighting up steady on that power side. And the control side is a switch ground, so you need to put your test light, which I screwed up initially, over to battery positive, so that when it switches the ground, the test light will flicker, and it just gives you a little dim flicker because a test light isn't really the preferred method of checking this annoyed light is but you can do it uh, with a test light and this is the first time I ever did it with a test light and it works fine what I was doing was I was manipulating that that harness enough trying to get the fat test light probe into the front of the harness you'll see there on my left hand I'm grabbing the back of the harness so I think what, what the problem was I had a bad fuel injector that's gonna be the problem but I played with that harness so much that I may have screwed that harness up. Well, the harness was going, and that's why we got the P200 code. Maybe the harness was going, the heat played a little role in it, whatever it might be. 
but manipulating the back of that harness, you're going to see, I found where there was a, a break in the wire, and you could see the wire just folds on the insulation, which means the copper going through the wire wasn't really there anymore. And you can see here, you could just fold that wire very easily with no pressure. It's just the insulation holding it together, and there's a break in the wire there. Now, was that a partial break? I, I'm, I'm thinking it might have been a partial break, and I did it in with my fat fingers uh, manipulating it. But this truck needs a connector. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, there was, nobody had the connector in stock. It's usually a stock part. Nobody had it. I forget what day of the week it was, but none of the big box guys had it. And the, um, one of the mom and pop stores that, you know, services, repair shops would have definitely had it. They were closed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to repair. I repair this wire, but in the meantime, the other wire was bad too. It had the same kind of break. And after I repaired this one, it didn't work. I just called the quits and waited the, um, the day for the new connector to come in, and you're going to see my repair now. I finally turned the mic back on. I'm going to try to make a little temporary solder repair. Twist and solder, some heat shrink, put over it like that. Only drawback is going to be that that weather tight connector is not going to be weather tight anymore. Get my little soldering jig out. This thing has come in very handy, especially if you have old eyes. Um, I like it. Real cheap on Amazon. I'll link it in the description below, but it comes in real handy. Holds things nice. Helps you see. Alright, so this looks pretty good. Okay. That clips back in. I, I have a feeling I'm having the same problem with my control wire also. You could just feel how it wants to fold right there. So what I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap some tape around this just to give that control wire a little a little rigidity next to the um, the wire we just repaired, and hopefully it'll hold it in place. All right, I'm just trying to make this. Halfway watertight, I am going to order another connector. And let's see. I'll leave the harness undone like I had it. All right, so now I'm going to turn the ignition on. I'm going to clear the codes out, start it up. Hopefully, it's running smooth, and we'll see if we have any more codes. I will order a, uh, a pigtail. Yeah, I'm getting in just before the rain. Yeah. Still seems rough. I wonder if it's that other wire now that I told you it felt funny. There it is. It's not there all the time. All right, so I fixed one side, and now the other side's doing the same thing. It's right with that little blue tab that held the wires into the connector. That was the break right there. If I jiggle, you can see right now it's shaking a little. And if I jiggle, you can see it stop. So I thought maybe the little connector repair would hit me in a pinch. I'm just going to order a connector. That's what it needs. Um, it was really a little. I think. I think if I tried to diagnose that a little slower. I would have been able to isolate that connector. I was, you know, I kind of wiggled that connector. I didn't really hear anything. So I don't know. 
I don't know if that injector that I pulled out was actually bad or was that harness or did I did I mess up the harness because it was only doing it when it was hot now it does it all the time so I'm I think I might have missed I think I had a bad injector and then I think me playing with that harness and, and constantly probing it you know I don't have like a, a, a those real thin probes and I think I might have jacked the harness up a little bit or put enough tension on those wires for the, those wires to mess up so chances are I think I might have messed up the harness and the injector uh, was messed up because I was only doing it when it was hot. Right, so it came in a day but of course we couldn't get to it so a couple days later we got our connector I'll link the connector and the fuel injector in the description below um, just realize that the flex fuel engines um, I think they're the VIN Z or the VIN T there's a VIN T and a VIN Z um, one's flex fuel one's not they are different injectors and they are different pigtails so this is the correct pigtail it's an aftermarket it's an AUS which is the same brand injector we got um, and now we're gonna put this in I'm pretty much gonna cut back some of the uh, factory harness and I'm gonna solder them together Now, all I got to do is plug it in and make sure it works. If it does, then I can clean up my wiring with a couple of, with some electrical tape, wrap this back up like it was from the factory, um, put my clamps back on, and zip tie anything that's, uh, that's rubbing up, and uh, we're good. So let's uh, clear the codes, plug it in, and test it out. Well, it's fixed, but don't really do what I did because I was going good. I was going through my troubleshooting and I was headed in the right direction. And then when I wasn't 100% certain that the fuel injector was bad, I had a hunch and I went with my hunch that the fuel injector was bad and maybe it was bad, but we'll never know. Because, well, we won't know until I have to use that fuel injector because I'm gonna put it back in the box and I'm gonna, the, the used one. I'm going to put it in the box where the new one was in, and I'm going to put a maybe on it. Because we're not 100% certain the fuel injector was bad, because we put the fuel injector in. But during the troubleshooting, I was fussing with that connector, trying to get a, a voltage reading on it or the test light to read. And I was fussing with it so much, I feel like I might have messed the connector up. So I don't know if the connector was bad. Um, I think I could have messed it up, or it could have been bad. I don't know, a combination of the fuel injector and the connector, maybe, but we're never going to know because my, I, I fell short in my troubleshooting, that was my mistake. I jumped the gun, instead of swapping number three and number one like I had originally planned on doing, I just said, you know what, I'm going to do it once and be done with it, and that wasn't the case. So we wound up taking the new injector, swapping it over to one, taking one, putting it in three, still had that, that uh, the, the misfire on cylinder three, and then we found the broken wire which was we only saw initially broken on one side but it was going on the other side and futzing with it made it go completely on the other side so my solder repair which would have worked needed to go on the other side as well so I would have had to do two solder repairs for the temporary connector it just didn't make sense to do it bought the connector so I'll link all of the parts in the description below the injector the connector and if you don't have a flex fuel like this one is a flex fuel I'll link the the correct injector and connector um, but my, my principle, I think my theory and my principle behind the troubleshooting was good. I just jumped the gun because I got excited, jumped the gun, wanted to get it done, and I screwed up. In the end, it's fixed. Did we put an injector on it where we didn't need it? Maybe. We're not going to know until we go to use that injector to troubleshoot something else. But, hey, listen, it is what it is, and you learn as you do it, and you learn not to make that mistake again, which I'm not going to make that mistake again. I'm just going to swap the injectors this way. I know whether I got a good injector or a bad injector, 
and I can figure it out from there. It's tough sometimes with, you know, intermittent, you know, you move the wire, you jiggle, te jiggle test sometimes, it, sometimes it, it works, sometimes it doesn't. It, it, it's tough sometimes, but I'm happy it's done. Is what it is, I guess. But at least it's done, and, uh, and if you have a problem like this, you sort of have a guide to how to troubleshoot it. Just don't jump the gun like I did. Questions, comments, concerns, put them down below. Love to hear it. You want to make fun of me for jumping the gun and putting that injector in? Go right ahead. I got thick skin. And as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>